I just want to welcome everybody via Zoom for to our January 2024 Lunch and Learn. Happy New Year and happy snow day. Um, I think we've had enough snow. We cannot have, snow, have any more snow. I'm good. But anyway, I want to thank Jamie Doss for being our speaker today. She is the Saline County Clerk, election clerk, and she's going to walk us through and tell us all about this. And I can never remember how it goes, but I call it the presidential preparation prep preference. Preference. Preference primary. I can't get those three P's straight. And I believe it's going to be held on March the 19th. So, Jamie, tell us all about it. Okay, so um, as Lori said, I'm Jamie Doss. I'm the county clerk and election officer. And I was just looking at um, some of my um, memories and what came back is I was um, actually sworn in today in 2017 for my first term of office. Um, as the county clerk. So I've actually been with the county. Um, this is my 27th year. So um, so I've been here uh, for a little while, but I was actually sworn my first term in 17. So I thought that was interesting that that was today. But um, and we'll talk about something I haven't done so far in administering elections is a presidential preference primary. Um, so the the law was a a bill was passed in 2023 to um, have the state run um, the party's um, caucuses. So this is uh, the presidential preference primary. And in Kansas, um, we first had one, the law was passed in 1978. And we had our first presidential preference primary in 1980 on April Fool's Day. And then in 1992, that was April 7th, um, we had it as well. And so we haven't had one since 1992. Um, these rules um, for this election uh, vary from our normal primary and uh, general elections. Um, the dates and times um, all are different. So what our voters are used to seeing and the public is used to seeing is gonna be a little bit different for this election. So um, I'll kind of go over some of those key things. If you have a, a question or something comes up, um, please feel free to stop me. You know, I can address that at that time if you'd like. So, um, but the first deadline that's coming forward for us, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a slight head cold, so I kind of sound horrible, but um, the filing deadline um, is coming up and it's January 19th at noon. Um, so that is well, obviously Friday. Um, we, uh, in this bill that they passed, they changed the normal filing fee. So it used to be in 1992, we had a lot of candidates because it was only $100. Well, for this election, the filing fee is $10,000. So it's it's kind of cut down from, you know, what we saw in those previous years with the uh, more candidates that we had on there. So, so that will be coming up. Currently, right now, we have two Democratic candidates um, and one Republican candidate. Those you can find on the Secretary of State's website. I have a link from our website to theirs, um, but they have the list um, under their elections. And if you look under their candidate list, you can pick the election you wanna uh, find out about. And they have the presidential preference primary set out. But we right now show um, two Democratic candidates and one Republican. Um, that is also the same deadline to withdraw. So if any of those candidates want to withdraw, they can. So at, at that same time, January 19th at noon. So um, and the next uh, the next deadline is, is kind of a, a little bit different is the voter registration deadline. The voter registration deadline for this election is February 20th. So it is um, 30 days and obviously the, the 19th is a holiday. So it's the 20th. So we will be doing, let me grab my calendar. I have it in front of me. Uh, we will be doing late night voter registration for this election um, on, I just finished the calendar yesterday, um, Thursday, February 15th. We will be working uh, until 7 p.m. that day. Um, we will also be doing a late night voter registration um, on the 20th until 7 p.m. as well. So those um, 
registrations can either come in person by mail or through, um, I know the state's website, or I know there's some uh, one other website that, that can be used as well, the KS votes, we get that as well. So, um, but that deadline is for voter registration. So if you've changed your name, address, um, are not currently registered, if you know anyone that will be 18 on or before that day, please make sure they get registered um, prior to election day, because they have to be registered, so um, to be able to vote. Um, the next um, part is if for unaffiliated voters, so unaffiliated voters um, that are this is this election is just for the Democratic and Republican primaries, um, presidential preference primaries. So you have to be affiliated with one of those parties to be able to vote in their in their election. So um, you can um, change your party uh, affiliation by filling out a new voter registration card. Um, you, like I said, in our office or online, um, and you can do that up until and on election day. So if you haven't decided um, what you want, uh, what party you want to choose, if you're currently unaffiliated, you can do that even when you walk in um, either early voting or at the polls on that day. You can fill out a card at that time, affiliate with that party, and then and then vote that ballot. So. Um, the presidential preference primary, um, before I get too far into this, is really just, you're not choosing your winners. You're choosing um, who you want the party. Um, each party has 39 delegates. So the Democratic Party and the Republican Party both have the 39 delegates uh, for the state. And so um, they are choosing who they want the party to, to represent, where they want those um, uh, that support to go. So you're not actually choosing your your um, the president at that time. That choice will be in November when that for your for your vote. Um, and you also have a choice of none of the names shown. That will also be on the ballot. So if you go in and vote, you're going to see the candidates on each of those ballots. You're also going to see none of those names shown. And that is if you want um, the delegation to be uncommitted for Kansas at the national convention. And so a voter has the right to choose that as well when they go in. So um, let's see. The, so the, I'm sorry to interrupt, Jamie. Yeah. I don't really understand how this is different from a regular primary. So. Um, this is similar to the, the party's normal caucus procedures. So this is just us running the state, uh, the state running their normal caucus that the parties would run. We're doing it through the election process um, for, the, for the parties. So this is just choosing the delegates. So what would, what would I see on the ballot if I go in to vote? Um, you would see each of the candidates for your for your um, party. So, like I said, if Democrat, you'll see the Democratic candidates, and then you'll see um, none of the names shown above, and that's your choice for for who you want the delegation for your party to to represent to promote. And then the same on the Republican side, you will have the Republican candidates, so none of the names shown above. So, if uh, if I'm Republican, I will see a name mm -hmm. who is, of a person who is running for president, and then I'll see a choice of none of the above, mm -hmm. and those would be my only two choices, unless right. someone re uh, files before the deadline. Yeah, so right now, yeah, so right now it's just one, but whatever the final um, candidates will be on Friday, is those are the names that you will see, and this is just... Um, to really just to give the parties a list of candidates, what the, the voter turnout and the support was for each one of those candidates at, for the state. And then the parties make their rules on how they wanna do the delegation and 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 that stuff. They do all of those rules. This is 100% us just doing the voting part of it for the parties. All of the rules are set up by those parties on how they wanna choose their delegates. But the state has to pay for it. The, yeah, the state chose to, to do that, yes. 
Oh, they, they didn't have to? I thought you said a law was passed. Yeah, they they passed the presidential preference primary bill to fund was a state-run presidential preference primary. So now the Secretary of State's office has to pay for the party's primaries, even though the parties get to make all the rules. Is that right? That was what the legislature passed. And yes, the, okay. the state will be paying Just for that. Just trying to clarify. Yeah. Um, you're Thank fine. You. And Jamie, uh -huh. uh, two things. First, that was the Kansas legislature, not the national legislature yes, that so. passed this bill, right? Yes. Yes. And the second one question is, uh, we have a question in the chat. If you affiliate, if you change your party affiliation on election day, will that be a provisional ballot? No. So unaffiliated are never provisional, um, whether it be in the presidential preference primary or in um a, a normal primary, so the ones that we have in August. Um, if you are simply changing your party, that is, you are just affiliating and then you you are voting a, a regular ballot, you are not provisional. So that is a good question. I get that a lot. So if you happen to be unaffiliated and you moved, then you're provisional. But if you're just affiliating, you are not provisional. So so that's a good question. One more, sorry. You're so fine. I have lived in Kansas so long, I can't remember voting in a primary in another state. So how is this system different from a primary? Well, one, you're not choosing your candidate. Even you, though the candidate's name will be on the ballot. You're choosing your support for that candidate and, and uh, what you want for the parties to um, support who you, I mean, if you, I don't know if you've attended a caucus, but you vote for those those candidates that you want. So if you have multiple, you would then be choosing, I want my party to support this candidate for the state of Kansas. Is that, did I answer that? Well, I guess I don't really, I, I still don't understand if I were in a state that was having an actual primary, how would that be different? Well, we don't normally in Kansas have uh, primaries for presidency. This is this is new. Normally, um, they have their caucuses, they do their delegation, they do the national convention, and then those get put on the ballot in November. So in an August primary, the president is never on there in Kansas. And I'm only speaking Kansas specific. So if I'm answering questions, just understand that I'm just talking Kansas law. So so normally we don't have the president on the primary um, ballot in August. Okay, so are we having a primary election in August? Yes, yes. we will still have a primary election in August for state and local offices. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question? Uh, we had a question. Why did the cost of registration rise so dramatically from a hundred to ten thousand? Um, that it was all that all went through the legislature. I think um, my understanding is obviously I wasn't there for that, but my understanding, the reason why they changed that bill was to kind of uh, people they want to make sure that the people on the ballot are are serious for the, running for office. And I think that was the intent of that because, you know, for a hundred dollars, I mean, I not me personally, I wouldn't want that job. But <laughs> for a hundred dollars, why wouldn't you want your name to be on a presidential ballot? And I think that was kind of that 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 thought is we want to make sure that the people on the ballot actually want to are running for president and and not just, you know, and kind of limiting the 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 pool of people because I mean I think our candidate list for president in ninety two I had it here actually I actually went back and looked at our ballots I thought it was very interesting so um, in ninety two I think we had or no this is eighty I think we had nine Democrats and I want to say about fifteen Republicans roughly that were on the ballot so this is making sure that that we're narrowing that that pool to um, the people who actually are are wanting to run at a national level. <clears throat> so um, the mail ballot deadlines are a little bit different as well. 
Um, so the deadline to request a ballot by mail is February 19th. Um, so you would need to make sure we have your uh, uh, application in at that time, which is 30 days prior to the election, which is a little bit different. Um, and then um, those will be mailed out on February 28th. Um, so that is, like I said, that is a little bit different. Um, the other, the other change is if you're returning your ballot by mail, we don't have the three day postmark in this election. So it has to be in by the close of polls at 7 PM. Um, so that would be, um, it would need to, the application deadline is February 19th. Um, and then the ballots will be mailed out on February 28th and they will need to be in by 7 p.m. on March 19th. So at the end of, cl of the close of polls, um, they can be um, returned to any polling location or the ballot box at the Sling County building or in our office. So. So Jamie, are those local, locally chosen dates? Because I'm on the Secretary of State's website and it says February 20th for the deadline to uh, apply for an advance vote by mail ballot or register. Right. It is the 20th. I forgot it was in it was in legal. It was originally the 19th and legal. Um, the Secretary of State's legal changed it to the 20th. I, I misspoke. You are correct. Okay because the holiday on Monday. So thank you for, for pointing that out. Yes, because the, the offices are closed. So the 20th is the last day to apply for advanced mail. Thank you for correcting me on that. Sure. The law actually does say the 19th, but they, they made the adjustment for the holiday. So, um, and then, um, but as far as the, re the mail out on the 28th and the return on the 19th, that, that is still the same. I, I did miss that um, holiday there. So um, in-person advanced voting will also start on February 28th. Um, and that will be in our office just as it, it has in, in, in the past and in our, our normal election. So um, that will be happening uh, on the same day uh, as the day we send out the mail ballots. We have already started programming for that election, so we should be ready to go here as soon as the candidate list is done. Um, make sure I didn't miss any dates here. We will be doing election worker training um, prior to this election as we have in the past. So if you know anyone that's uh, wanting to sign up, they can do that on the Secretary of State's side. They can fill out an application that's on our side as well. Um, and we'll start um, about the third week in February doing uh, training for that. So if you're interested in that or know someone that might be, or Lori, make sure your husband gets signed up again. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any other key dates that I'm missing. We will have, um, this one we'll, we'll do the public test. Um, we test our equipment on uh, March 14th, um, and we will uh, also have a, a post-election audit, which will happen after the election. Um, the polling places on March 19th will be the same as your current polling places. We're not, we don't adjust those in Saline County um, for certain elections. So those will be the same as the ones that you go to um, if you haven't voted in the last um, year, like if you didn't vote in 2023, please go out to Kansas Voter View and double check your polling location or look at your voter uh, registration card that we sent out to you because some of those have changed. And we sent out a card to everyone last year of their updating places. So that did, we did make an adjustment uh, to some of those. So please make sure that you check that out. Um, uh, advanced voting ends at noon the day before the election at the courthouse. So on March 18th at noon, it, we will be uh, um, ending advanced voting. So please make sure that you uh, do that part of the election if you would like to do it before. Um, and then election day is March 19th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And again, the deadline to receive ballots is the 19th as well. 
at 7 p.m. Um, we will we be... Had, Jamie? Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. We had a request to go over the mail in the... Uh, just a second. The mail-in deadlines. Once again, one more time. Okay, so to request a ballot is is February twentieth. We will mail those out March or February twenty eighth, and they are due March nineteenth at seven p.m. Thank you. Yes, and um, for the on a, so if you want to change your party, you would need to do that before the nineteenth, before the voter registration deadline. Only someone that is unaffiliated after the 19th can then choose to affiliate. So please be mindful oh. of that. So that's a little bit different. And, and that's the way it is in the, in, in the primary too, is the only ones that can change after that 19th the deadline, the January 19th, or sorry, February 20th deadline is someone that is unaffiliated. So, um, after voter registration, it is only unaffiliated voters that can make a change to their party affiliation. They cannot change anything else. So you have to be registered, have your registration updated. Um, and if you are a current party now, so if you are listed as a associated with a party, then if you wanna change your party, you have to do that by the voter registration deadline. You can't walk in and be uh, a libertarian, for instance, and then choose to be a Republican on election day. You have to be that at the close of registration if you are with a party currently. It is only unaffiliated voters that can make that, that affiliation after, after the voter registration deadline up until election day, so. So unaffiliated, does that mean you've put independent or independent is affiliated. Uh, so in Kansas, we we don't have an independent party. We have uh, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, the Libertarian Party, and unaffiliated, meaning you're not affiliated with any of those parties. Okay. So in Kansas, those are the only parties and only options you have to choose from, and that varies by state. So um, so right now we don't have an independent. So I think people kind of sometimes interchange those words, but. But unaffiliated just means you are not affiliated with a party. So, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Another question. Um, okay. I'm on the Secretary of State website, and I'm not seeing how to find who has filed to be on this primary ballot. Okay, so and I'm going off of memory. So I know elections is uh -huh. is the first drop down. And then you should come up with a screen that talks about um, candidate information, candidate list. Oh, okay, candidate. If you click Got on it. candidate list and then select the election that you're wanting the list for, then you would uh, it would show you that. And it you would just do that. There's a drop down for each one. Right now, they only have the presidential preference primary, and then the primary because some um, legislators have have already started filing for this year. So okay. Got it. Yep, that worked. Thank you. Okay, sure. I was like, that was going off of memory. So I was hoping I was telling you correctly. <laughs> well done. Okay, let me see if there's some. I think I've covered most every all of our dates that are coming up. Um, yeah, the February 20th, like I said, is the registration deadline. Um, last day to apply for advanced ballots by mail. Um, so, I mean, that, Jamie, that's stuff. yes. I don't know who said that. I'm sorry, Diana, I accidentally muted you. There you go. I said there are some questions in the chat for Jamie. Okay. The only ones, let's see, going over the dates. And the electoral college members required for the party that uh, required to vote for the party that selected them. That is, I did have not read over, and I'm going to be honest, I have not read over all of the um, party rules um, that are on the state site. Um, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to answer that incorrectly, but all of the rules that the parties have set up um, are, are on the secretary of state site. So I would I would look at those um, 
to be sure because I don't know what their rules are specifically. So, Jamie, we had a question about whether the cost of registering for all the offices went up or just for the president. No, just for the president. All the other offices, um, whether at the state and national level, those are set, you know, either state or national costs. Um, and the local level, the law is one is one percent of uh, the salary as um, outlined by the county clerk, and that has not changed. Um, that election information should be on our um, website here in the next week. So, if someone is wanting to file for office, that should be up there here shortly. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So that's kind of most of the dates as far as the presidential preference primary. Um, the upcoming dates is still um, August 6th is for the primary election. And then November 7th is for the, or November 5th is the general election. So, so that's, um, are there any other questions? Uh, I guess I wanna ask, is there any, um publicity planned on this thing or is that up to the to the parties um so i am working on trying to get some stuff out on our social media i know that i speak on the radio and a couple a couple i have a, about three other things uh this january um speaking to different groups um i'm hoping the parties are promoting that as well i know the secretary of state uh office has been uh, out and about over the last several months talking about it on different on different uh, uh, media types. And then um, I'm trying to think, I know they're putting on the paper, but um, hopefully we can get more and more out there. I know in looking at 92, I think we only had 31% turnout, if I remember correctly. Um, and so I'm hoping that that we have a little bit more than that this year, but this is new to the state of Kansas, you know, since 1992. So it'll be um, not a lot of heard about it. So I'm hoping to get more and more out there. I know that I go out to one of the school districts and try to, to speak to them and hoping that more of them will um, be available for me to come speak as well and, and uh, get some more information both at schools and out to the public. So we're working on it. And my social media person helping me as well, so. And I appreciate you guys getting getting this information out as well. And and um, I will have the dates on our calendar. I can send my PowerPoint out to you. Like I said, we just got the calendar a couple of days ago from the state. Um, so I want to just verify and make sure I had everything up to date, which is why the difference in the 19th and 20th is, as I remember now, I just finished that calendar. So they had made that adjustment. So. You know, uh, we had a question of whether, well, you know, uh, who drove this idea to have a primary uh, like this? <clears throat> um, I did not look at the sponsors of this bill. Um, there were a couple of different versions. And so I have not looked at which legislator um, or legislators actually um, sponsored this. Um, but I can get back to you and look at that. Or you can also go into the... the um, the Kansas legislature website and look at the bill and see who sponsored it. Um, and that will tell you. So I can look it up and be glad to get back to you. If you choose Do you to. know the name or the number of the bill? Um, well, the one that was actually signed, I believe was Senate substitute. Let me get the number. Um, yeah, Senate substitute for House Bill 2053. 2053, okay. Mm -hmm. And the question I saw was the cost estimated uh, when the law was passed. Um, so the what was uh, budgeted was between four and five million dollars for the state of Kansas. And that does not cover all of our county expenses. That only covers um, the direct costs. So any indirect costs would be um, uh, for the county. So, but they are covering the direct cost, which is 
like I said, between four and $5 million for the state. So promo would be an indirect cost. Is that right? Promotion. It, it can be. I mean, I'm going to submit it, but that also gets, you know, chosen. I don't know about the publications are a direct cost. The promotion, I, I'm not sure if that's going to be covered or not. That's something that uh, I'll submit and, and that determination will be made at a later date. But election workers would be a direct cost. Correct. Mailings, election workers, ballots, programming, those things are all direct costs, but anything additional can be uh, perceived as indirect costs, and that would be covered by the counties. Anything else that... Um, I'm not seeing any other questions, uh, but anybody online here can unmute and ask a question if you want to. We had 31, 32%, 31% and 92, you said? Yes, that's what I, that's what I read on. I, I had to go down to the basement and look at the old journals, which was kind of interesting. And then, um, so that's what the turnout was. I did a pretty, pretty good for a primary, really. Yeah. So that's actually what I was going to ask. What about our recent August primaries? What, what do those usually run turnout wise? Um, around that a little, or maybe even a little less, they, they really don't, um, get the, the turnout that we normally see, like in, in November, we usually see about 65%, um, 62 to 65 is our normal even in November. So, um, just because we have a few minutes, I can kind of go over some of the, the positions that are up this year. Um, so in August and November, obviously we'll have the presidential preference primary in March, and then the president will be voted on in November. So those, that's the president. So then you have, um, the national races. Um, I'll start with our local races. So obviously you have, um, the, some of the townships are up. So if you're from out in the, the county, you'll have township, um, board members that will be up. You have all of the, um, local so you have um the treasurer the red shirt deeds the the county clerk um the sheriff you have uh county attorney and uh two of our commissioners so commissioner uh districts two and three are up this year um and then we have um all of our house districts um which we are a part of 69th 71st and 107th that changed um in 2022, so the 107th is is different for us. Um, and then um, we will have um, the Senate is up this year, so the 24th district is what we sit in. Um, and then we have um, our our national races, which are the congressmen and 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 then we will have in November the judges, but those those don't get uh, put on the ballot until November. But those are Supreme, Supreme Court. Uh, Court of Appeals, uh, the, the district court judges that will all be on there. Thank you. Quite a, quite a number in November <laughs> and August. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, and like I said, I'll get this. I'll get my PowerPoint out to you, and my calendar. The calendar will be on our website. I can send that out to your email as well. So you can so you can send it out. Um, but like I said, I just finished it up actually late yesterday afternoon. So um, are no other questions. That's all I have. There was a question that just came in the chat. I didn't see it. See the whole thing. Uh, there's one that says, "Is there a way to know?" what the caucus participation has been in comparison to the preference primary. Yeah, uh, th that would be interesting. I don't have the any of the records from the caucuses. So um, I don't know if that's something that each of the parties would have on their on their state website or, or uh, the local um, parties might have. Um, I don't have that information as far as their what they did and and their caucuses in the past. And we had 
I have one uh, party committee men and women it asks if those are elected. Those are elected actually in August. So those will be in the August election. Every everyone else on the ballot in August is nominated to the November ballot, but in in the on August 5th or August 6th, I'm sorry, August 6th, they are elected to those parties. And those um applications or those candidate filings have to be notarized if you're uh, looking to be a precinct uh, man or woman. Um, so if you if you want to have that um, have your name on the ballot, make sure you get that notarized or you can bring it into our office. We have three notaries, so we're welcome. Uh, we'll absolutely do that for you as well. I do try to go out to both parties um, uh, to their meetings to because I'm a, a, a notary and try to help them get uh, their candidates on the ballot for the precinct men and women. I try to go to both parties so that I can notarize those and it helps me get the forms back in the office, um, you know, and time to start programming. So we have, we have quite a few of those up this year. So those are every two years, those are up and elected in August. And then uh, we had a question of what's the filing deadline for August for the primary? Is it's June 3rd. Yeah, because of the, the holiday or the weekend, I'm sorry, June 3rd. No, At noon. July. No, June 3rd. Oh, for, oh, the filing deadline. Okay, right. Yes. Okay. Filing well, deadline. And, June 3rd. Okay. Yes. And the registration deadline for the primary would be when? Um, That is 21 days. So that would be a July. I have not worked on that, finished that calendar up. So I don't have that off the top of my head, but it's, it's 21 days prior to uh, the August 6th primary election. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> well, I want to thank Jamie for doing this and to walking us through what it's going to look like since most of us probably don't remember the last time. Um, and um, I just want to we're, we have been brainstorming as a board trying to figure out how we can get people to know about it. So we're going to be doing some more, maybe doing some car caravans with signs to about the um, election so people know and social media as well. Um, so whatever we can do to help you, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and absolutely. Let me know um, if there's uh, information you need, like for voter registration cards or or um, any packets or anything that you might need. Just stop by our office and we can get those for you. Because, yeah, um, it all it takes all of us to make this happen. I don't I don't do elections on my own. It takes it takes uh, tons of groups and and uh, and support and election workers that I couldn't do this without everyone's help. So I do appreciate that as well. So. Well, we appreciate you and thank you for doing this. And um, our next Lunch and Learn will be February the 13th. And if everything, if we don't have snow, we'll be back at the library. And we're the topic is going to be child care. And then on February the 3rd, league members have the opportunity to meet at, at Astra at 3 p.m., and we are going to talk about the consensus. Oh, 2 p.m. instead of. So yeah, we're not going to. Do... We decided to do it instead of postcards. I think okay. that was the last decision. Okay. So it's on the state's league study about the election um, position that the league has. And administration. Ad election administration. So we're going to talk about it and get a concurrence because we will be voting on that at the state council in April in Lawrence. So I, I don't think I have anything else. I just want to thank everybody for jumping on and hope everybody's staying warm and safe out of with this almost seven inches of snow we got. So 
So thanks, everybody. <laughs>